Hey Hi Teach. Last time, remember, we also emphasized the importance of sketching, importance of visuals, right? Yes. So, uh, you don't have to exactly produce the exact same graph. It will just give you an idea. So mm -hmm. in here, this is a function, right? So, my dependent variable here is going to be n. Mm -hmm. Right? Why? Mm -hmm. Because n changes with oh. respect to time. time. That's the whole point. You, your t here is the independent variable and uh, n here is a dependent variable because it depends on time. Mm -hmm. okay? The smart thing to do when you sketch a graph first, you have to first put the initial value, which means time equals zero. When you put time equals zero, your number going to be an mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay? So, and then I suggested before that, you know, no matter, I showed before, no matter what number you put, your value will decrease, okay? It will go like that. Mm -hmm. And this is t equals zero. And then there will be a special time here, okay? A special moment where our sample will be the half of it. Mm. Okay? Mm. What time is that? Rechan, do you think? The time where it is indicated on the graph. <laughs> <laughs> that is the time of half-life. Yes. Right? Because in here, in for every time value, there will be a... Half of it. Corresponding sample, remaining right. of the sample, right? And right. this is what I'm looking for. It is very important, right? So, what we need to do now, then, we have to figure out to see what happens if I actually plug uh, this at this sample at this time. Okay, let's just put it put it in our equation. So ba basically, I'm just going to plug these numbers here in the mm. equation. Mm. So what I said, now our time is equal to half-life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just plug our time. And t, 1 over half, yeah. will be equal to and not times uh, e to the lambda uh, negative t minus uh, 1 over half, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in here, what is this uh, equal to? This is equals to the time, to, no, the mass of the uh, half. Yes. Mass half, I, half of the, I yeah. already defined it, that's, that's going to be the half of the sample and, mm. and not over 2 and mm. it will be equal to and not times e to the minus lambda t 1 over 2 Okay, mm. good, now I have some, you know, some stuff, I, I love cancelling things out <laughs> <laughs> Okay in here I can cancel these two out, right? Mm -hmm. So, in, then if I go back to my Continue, 1 over 2 is equal to e to the minus lambda t 1 Half. over 2. However, I, do, I don't like the, this notation, so let's just change it to the natural logarithm, right? Okay. So, how can I get rid of e? <laughs> you lock both sides. Yes, I have to nat take the natural logarithm of the both sides. So, it is natural logarithm 1 over 2 is equal to Lon e. Of, uh, e to the minus lambda t 1 over half. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this is a number. Can Do you have a calculator? Maybe you can look that up for me. What is, what is this? Uh, negative 0 0.693. Oh, really? Lon half. Negative 0 0.693. Mm -hmm. This number is kind of uh, interesting, don't you think? Yeah, it's like negative. <laughs> Minus lambda t uh, 1 over 2, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, the natural logarithm and the e cancelled each other out. Do you, do you find this, this number kind of interesting? Did you see this before? It's right at the top. To What was the first number again? <laughs> That's hey. exactly right. Hey. That's not my formula. Here. Yeah, 693. It's the same number. Hey. So what happens is, let's just make look, make this look more pretty. The the negative sides cancels each other out, right? They are both negative from both sides. Mm -hmm. And there is lambda times t. 
So my whole purpose was to find the uh, half half lifetime, which is equal to 0 0.693 divided, divided by, by lambda. Lambda. Oh, so wow. what I did was now I obtained that equation. So what is important here, the importance of derivation is, if I were to give you this equation, I said, okay, here's your equation, just plug the numbers and, you know, and find it, but then you will not understand it. Mm. That is the importance of the derivation. Once you do this for once, and then you will figure out, you know, you, you will know exactly the process, where did this number come from, you know, and the, it, is, it is so much easier to remember afterwards. Okay? Yeah. So that's why I always say we have to make sure that you know the students they always drive the equations and they obtain this formula. It's so important. Cool. Okay. So okay, this is great. Now mathematically we explain this, but why it is this important? Like what are we gonna make use of it, right? Yeah. And in here um, we have to talk about uh, uh, what's called an, an isotope. What do you think an isotope is? Something. <laughs> <laughs> so an isotope is, um, you know, we have the elements, right? In the mm -hmm. periodic table. An isotope um, is different versions of the same element, okay? So when we represent an element in a periodic table, we represent, let's just say X, okay? It's an arbitrary element. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure you saw here, there's a number here. Yeah. And this number is actually represents the, the number of protons mm -hmm. in the in that element. It's also called the atomic number. Mm -hmm. And in here, there is an, another number called A, which is equal to Z plus N. And this one is called the, the mass number, which is equal to number of protons plus the neutrons. Okay. Okay. So what I showed here, that number of protons and neutrons in a nucleus is important because that's how we categorize them in the periodic table, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and these isotopes, they have uh, identical chemical properties. And this is very important. So for example, let's talk about the carbon, okay? Carbon, uh, naturally, it has uh, six protons, okay? So how many neutrons does it have? Six. Six, right? And we call this um, carbon-12, okay? And there's another isotope called also carbon-13. So in here, as you can see, the proton numbers are the same, but the neutron numbers are different. Right. right? So it means carbon-12 and carbon-13, they are the isotopes of the carbon element. Ooh. It is the same thing, but different version. However, mm -hmm. these two guys are quite boring. Okay. Why? Because they are stable, they just they don't change. Uh, and we don't we don't like stables. Sometimes being unstable is good, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's another one, okay? Fourteen carbon fourteen, and this is very good. And the reason for that is because this one is unstable. Okay. Oh, okay. So in here, as you can see, it has six protons and eight neutrons, mm -hmm. right? So There's mm -hmm. a lot of neutrons, mm -hmm. and uh, as, as that naughty kid, it has to get rid of that uh, neutron. <laughs> neutron so that this carbon turns into a, a nitrogen and you know it also when it does this it also changes one of it is neutron to a proton mm. right a neutron changes into a proton so the reason why I'm telling all this is because this is very important why we are all made of carbon right mm -hmm. in our atmosphere there is a place called biosphere Right? Okay. But why is it called biosphere? No idea. Because bio, it comes from biology. There is life. Oh. There is everything in there, right? Okay. So in there, there is a lot of like different, you know, elements and everything, but there is also carbon. Okay. Mm. So when you are, you are alive now, you are breathing, you are, you know, eating and everything. And the, 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 the Concent so it's the concentration, the number of carbons in your body uh, stays kind of same. Mm. It replenishes every time, right? Okay. However, when you die, that process doesn't continue. Mm -hmm. And it means after you die, this unstable uh, carbon in your body, it will 
Okay. Uh huh. It will just that you are gonna have less and less and less carbon, right? Right. And right. That's exactly how we can measure when someone is dead using the carbon dating. Okay. Oh. Oh is, wow. Okay. <laughs> it is very 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 important. But do you know the half life of carbon? What do you think? Make a guess. Should be quite long, I guess. I have no idea. It is kind of approximately 5,730 years. Wow. So it means uh, if someone died 6,000 years ago, right? And if I find that, if I test it, in his body, there should be half of the carbon that what it's supposed to be at the time of his death. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right? Is, does it make sense? Yes, it does. And, and 5,730 years from now on, there will be... Half of that. Another half then. So it goes like that. That's how we can find out. And so, but luckily we have an equation. So let's just um, put it in there, right? We mm. already calculated. What was it? T, 1 over half is mm -hmm. equal to 0 0.693 divided by lambda. Mm -hmm. uh, in here, the... Proportional to constants, they are actually known for uh, for a lot of things. It can be uh, actually calculated from the half-life, but in the case of carbon, it is 0 0.000121. So let's just do this calculation, and mm -hmm. I'm going to need your uh, calculation skills again. <laughs> 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.000121. What is this uh, roughly equal to? Wow. 5,727.27 recurring decimals. Okay, I guess it wouldn't be too bad if we just write 30 years and then this is not equal, this is rough. Three significant figures, yeah. Five. Yeah, and that's exactly how we know to carbon date things, you know. Uh, this is quite important because um, the, the radioisotopes, we use it a lot of applications you cannot even think of. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for example, let me pull up a picture here and then show. And so, this one was a painting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, this painting, um, it was claimed that it was uh, it was written that it was painted in 1886. So they went there and they took a little sample right here mm -hmm. in this house. Right. And then we carbon dated it. Turns out, turns out it is actually from the 20th century. <laughs> ah, so, so it's a fake. <laughs> so it, it's a it's a fraud, right? Yeah. So it, this is really important because these kind of things. Think about it. Like it it shows us our past. It shows us you know the art and the culture, what was happening thousands of years ago. So we have to know exactly what is right and what is wrong. It's so important to to actually know exact sort of or rough dates of you know, an art piece. For archaeologists or you know geologists, it's so important. Yeah, so it's more and than just math. It's actually got it's actually a way to connect to our past. That's for sure and because history. You, can, you can never understand today if you don't know what happened in the past. Yes, exactly. Right? So, and this is just one application, and uh, uh, the half life is, is quite important. But actually, what I wanted to show you here the importance of understanding the derivation. And remember, in our last video, we talked about how important math is. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, you can turn language into math. Yes. And and using that, you can make sense of things. Yeah, it's like we, we, what we did was to really go down to the very basics of deriva uh, derivatives and integration to, yes. to, to, to illustrate how that formula came about so that we actually make sense out of that. Yeah. And I certainly and hope that's useful for the students who are watching so this. I think it's so important for us to give our students to this joy of understanding. Indeed. Because this is joyful. This is not torture. Of course, <laughs> you have to have some sort of, you know, math, like background to understand how you do these derivatives and integrals and everything. There's just a little period of time and it's kind of boring. But after that, it gets quite delightful. 
something, right? Right. So I really encourage all, like everyone, and especially college kids, to have this habit of driving everything. Mm, you know, indeed. It is, it is so important, and um, visuals like graphs. Yes. Yes. Right. So important. It, it gives you an understanding that the, the numbers or the, the variables cannot give. Awesome, man. Then today yeah. is just a wonderful lecture by Errol for sharing with us how a simple formula can be de- was, was actually derived from very basic functions of integration, uh, from uh, differentiation and integration. Uh, yeah, but the, the ideas of differentiation and integration may not be simple, but the basics and the manipulations of the equations th- during that journey to get to this equation is basic. It is. Yes. So all I did was the... Yeah, I, I, you have to learn what is, of course, you know, derivative and integral is. Mm. But all these manipulations, I just learned them also in, in secondary school. Yes, awesome. And <laughs> ultimately, math is not just math. It, it, for it, sure it shows it, it you gave me an insight into how we could actually use math to find out about carbon dating and how things like this can actually connect us to the very human aspect of ourselves as our history our heritage and you never know what other things we can actually find out using this yeah and and maybe uh, for the next video we can ask the viewers uh, you know if they want you know another derivation or if you know uh, if there's another equation, they want to break it down and, and you know make sense of it. So cool. Maybe, maybe we can we can work it out. Cool. Yeah. So we can get Errol. Uh, sorry, we could get our viewers, whoever is watching this. Okay, if you would like us to make sense of something that is really complex, Errol's the man here for you. Drop uh, us a message. Send us a uh, drop us a comment in the comment section below. And yeah, we will g- get down to selecting one and uh, doing it for our next video. For sure, for sure. Awesome. Great. Awesome. All right, and I guess that's all the time we have for Arrow today. Thank you very much for your time today. You're it's been welcome. awesome. Um, yeah, until the next time, do stay safe. The pandemic is still on. Stay safe and stay healthy. And until the next time, we have Arrow and Wei Tiang on Here High Teach. Take care and bye bye. Hey, High Teach.